With this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about production and marginal returns, and we're going to try to do some practice problems here um, in this table. So the first thing I actually encourage my students to do is, is go ahead and watch that Jacob Clifford video um, where he explains the ideas of production and marginal returns and how to figure out um, how, many, how many workers should be hired or how much should be produced is actually what that video is about. And so if you watch the video, you can find that he, has, he gives three pretty clear steps to determine the number of units to produce. The first is to calculate, calculate the marginal costs. And the second step, right, is to um, find or identify the marginal revenue, right? And the third is find the quantity where MR equals MC. So that's going to be important. So how is marginal cost calculated? So marginal cost is usually just calculated as the change in total cost divided by the change in output. We could also say the change in total cost divided by the change in total product. So you're sometimes going to be given that as well, right? So those are basically the same thing. And how, what do we equate to determine the amount to produce? Well, we just said that, MR equals MC. What do we call the amount produced using that equation from question number two? Um, we, we, or from that's it now, from question number three, that's from question three, sorry, question three. Um, we call that the profit maximizing, maximizing quantity. That's the profit maximizing quantity. And how is total revenue then determined for a perfectly competitive firm? Um, for this firm, a total revenue is your price times your quantity. Okay. So you could also say it's the marginal revenue times the quantity, since we know that price and marginal revenue are the same thing. And how is profit determined for the perfectly competitive firm? That would be total revenue minus total costs. So now we're going to use the data in this table to answer the questions below. So first thing we're going to do is fill out the table. Um, total revenue, total cost, marginal cost, marginal revenue, and profit. And these are the number of units in Mr. Clifford's video using a price of 20. So this is an important piece of information that we need. So 20, the very first thing is at units zero, if we produce zero units and $20, then... So I'm just going to say $20 is the price, just so we have that up here. Um, 20 times 0 is 0. 20 times 1 is 20. 20 times 2, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 120. Okay? And then we have marginal cost, which we know is the change in total cost over the change in output. So the change in total cost between um, the... So we're going to say that marginal cost, we know that for the zeroth unit doesn't exist. But for the change here is 10 divided by the change in units of output. And the change in units of output is 1. So 10 over 1 is 10. We're going to do t this here, 30 to 35, is a change in cost. That's 5 divided by the change in output. 1 to 2, the change is 1. So 5. Changing here, you have 35 to, um, to 45. Now we're back up again to 10. Okay, and then we go up to 15, to 30, and to 40. Now, marginal revenue. So with one way to think about marginal revenue is it's the additional, right? it's the change in total revenue divided by the change in output. Now we also know that, that marginal revenue is just equal to the price for this firm. So we, let's, let's look to see that this is actually true. The marginal revenue doesn't exist for the first, for the zeroth unit, but for the first one, let's see. Change in total revenue. It goes from zero to 20. So that's 20 in the numerator. And the denominator is zero to one. That's one. So 20 over one is 20. Now let's take a look for the second one. The change here is 20 to 40. That's 20 over 1 to 2. That's 1, so 20 over 1 is 20. So again, it's the change in total revenue over the change in output, but it's also just equal to the price. Just equal to the price. And now let's, let's take a look here and see, do we find where MR equals MC um, for any of these values? No, we don't. But we can find that here marginal cost is less than marginal revenue, 
and this one marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue. So this one is out, right? But if we kept increasing until this point and we produce here, that's our profit maximizing um, quantity is going to be at quantity four. Now let's let's prove it by actually figuring out what the profit values are for these. We wouldn't want to produce where cost exceeds revenue, but right before it is a good idea. So for the first one, total revenue minus total cost is negative 20. So that's profit. Remember, total revenue minus total cost. For the next one, 20 minus 30 is negative 10. And then 40 minus 35 is 5. 60 minus 45 is uh, 15. 80 minus 60 is 20. 100 minus 90 is 10. And 120 minus 130 is 10. And lo and behold, look at that, um, just, just through comparing where did marginal cost and marginal revenue, as close as we could get, right, without marginal cost going over, um, we get to a profit maximizing quantity of four. So now we could probably answer these questions pretty easily. Um, we've already done that, we've done TR, we've done that, we've done that. How many units will be produced? Four, and do the number you selected show maximum profit? Yes, yes they do. So hopefully this helps you understand some of the concepts related to the optimal um, production rule or the optimal output rule of MR equals MC. See you next time.